Hi, check out this thing. This is the 360 cam from a company called uh, Gyroptic, and they started out as a Kickstarter project. They got one and a half million bucks or thereabouts to uh, develop this th really funky looking 360 degree camera and uh, this is one of the first early uh, developer prototype uh, units it's definitely not the uh, finished product but uh, Matt uh, dropped by he's he was one of the early uh, uh, backers and there's a reason for it which you'll see in the next couple of months in a um, upcoming video which I'm sure everyone will like anyway there's a reason why I'm taking some 360 degree uh, camera footage of the lab here Anyway, um, yeah, I thought we'd just take a quick look at this early developer prototype. Doesn't look quite funky. We've got a metal uh, base here. You'll notice all the uh, heatsink uh, fins on there. So they're trying to increase the uh, surface area there. The thing does get quite warm when it actually uh, uh, runs. So they must be running this thing at like, you know, really full speed where you know guessing that there's you know either an fpga in there or they're running like an arm processor with uh, linux but a, like a really fast one because the interesting thing about this it's got three hd cameras on here they're all uh, you know at fixed angles like that with real wide angle fisheye uh, lenses on them that's why they can get full 360 degree coverage around here with only the three uh, cameras the interesting thing is they do all of the 360 degree video switch um, uh, stitching in this thing, 30 frames per second in real time hardware, all that stitching. So it must, they must even be doing that in some sort of FPGA or some sort of maybe some sort of GPU or something like that, or maybe just a really fast Linux um, processor, something like that. We're guessing anyway, or it could be, it may not be running an OS like Linux. It could be uh, completely proprietary. Anyway. This clips off oh, here, here, and here like this. It's got a tripod mount on the bottom, which is not deep enough. We had to actually use a spacer to uh, get that on a regular tripod. So that was a bit of a fail. We've got a micro USB here, which you can get the data out of or um, charge the thing. And it's, it's got this uh, rubber around the outside. In fact, well, we'll power it up in a minute because I'll show you something really funky. But yeah, there we go. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn, and unfortunately we can't see the electronics, but we do have some photos of the electronics, and um, here they are from the uh, Kickstarter um, update uh, page. So we can, you know, see a good lot of what's inside. This rubber material is actually um, semi-transparent, uh, uh, as you'll see in a minute with the uh, display. It looks like they've glued that onto the uh, uh, body there, and it looks like they've probably glued in this into the base of it so yeah sorry but we're not going to uh, not going to destroy matt's camera it goes for about uh, 500 uh bucks how much did you pay for the developer unit matt i think it was 12.99 12 12.99 12 oh for, for two 12.99 for two there we go for two developer uh units and you'll see why matt needs one um in the ne in the <laughs> next couple of months i'm going to go on site and he's going to show us something really cool anyway there is uh, the battery. I'm not sure if that is uh, like a standard size or whether they've uh, uh, developed their own one, but that's um, 1180 milliamp hours, 4.37 watt hours, um, which is, you know, quite reasonable lithium ion battery. I like the fact, one interesting design aspect of this thing is that uh, uh, they use this board to board interconnect on the bottom here. So, presumably, all uh, this base gets uh, really quite hot. So, presumably, all of the battery, at least the battery charging, is in there. But because it even gets hot, when it's um, when it's just being used and not charged, presumably uh, I would say like voltage regulation all done in here as well. Maybe for different uh, rails for uh, the CPUs or and or FPGAs or whatever it is they're uh, using inside this thing. So I think maybe all your power regulations done in the bottom there. And the interesting thing about and the reason I say that <clears throat> um, is because you can get different attachments like this. You can get one that actually screw it like it has an Edison screw attachment and it screws into your Edison screw light bulb socket on your roof. So you can just hang your um, camera from the roof. That's really quite funky and it is designed to be uh, waterproof hence why they've got the rubber seal on there it's not great if you really want it to be properly waterproof you've got to um, grease up that uh, o-ring of course but it's probably good enough for the odd uh, splash and uh, things like that I'm sure and it's uh, designed 
in France. There we go. I hide all my French viewers, but they're eh, made in the People's Republic of China. Why can't they make it in France? Come on, I'm sure you can. Anyway, the very early prototype of the website is 360.tv. They've even got the uh, QR uh, code on there, and there's the um, battery terminals. Well, actually, considering that the battery goes, actually, I just thought, considering that the battery goes into there, maybe they don't have voltage regulation in the bottom. Hmm, I don't know, because then you'd have to feed it through there and then back through this connector back into here and then your voltage regulation goes out. Anyway, that's um, quite a lot of pins on that board-to-board uh, -board inner connect there. It really is quite nice and you can get different attachments, um, different things to plug on the bottom. So I really like the design of this thing. It really is funky. It really is quite small. I mean, if you have a look at the size of that, I mean, it just fits in my hand like that. It really is... Uh, really is quite novel. So i um, got an SD card down in there and that's it. So as you can see the clips, I haven't done up these two clips here yet, but uh, interesting little clip arrangement. I'm not sure of the longevity of that, but probably seems, seems okay. And that will of course compress it and help keep the help it give a constant pressure around all sides on the O-ring, which is what you uh, need. You need even pressure right around. So that's, you know, it's not a bad design at all. And by the way, it does these little holes here. Um, microphones. It's got a spatial microphone array and spatial microphone technology. But unfortunately, we have had no luck whatsoever with the audio in this thing. It is absolutely awful. So we don't know if we're doing something wrong or there's something wrong with this uh, development unit. Keep in mind, this is a complete development unit. We have shot some 360 degree footage of the lab. It just saves it to a regular um, MPEG-4 file, uh, 2048 by 1024 resolution on the thing, uh, 30 uh, frames per second with just regular um, uh, audio embedded in it. And you just uh, take out that file, saves it to MPEG-4 in here. You don't have to convert it on a PC or anything. You just upload that direct to YouTube and YouTube recognizes that it's a wide format, you know, 360 degree video and it uh, treats it as such and you can watch it and pan around uh, side to side and up and down in full 360 degree. Although um, what they've done is they've watermarked, uh, as you'll see, uh, follow the link to go to the real footage here in the lab. They've actually water in the firmware here, they've watermarked uh, the bottom of the image. So if you pan right down so if you look you know right down like that um, you can see that they've watermarked the bottom of the image saying this is a development uh, prototype it's not representative of the final quality all that sort of jazz so um, anyway it's got two buttons here yes it does have wi-fi like this and uh, it's got a really funky display watch this come on you can do it look at that it's got these leds which um show up now here's a photo of the um, internal LED array, it's basically got an array of uh, little tiny uh, surface mount diodes on a flat flex, um, and that's how they're getting the display. And it's really quite funky. It's got you know it scrolls and everything like that, and we can record uh, video. Like if I just press that now, it starts recording. There we go, and press it again, and that's the file name. There we go. It just wrote the MP4 file, and then we've got the various uh, modes over here. We can take a photo, we can take a 360. Waiting. No, it's waiting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. But it's really funky. What's the bar graph at the bottom, That's the Matt? Battery level. Uh, that was the battery level. I thought it was. All right. We're waiting, waiting. It really is quite slow. Um, and we have had it lock up. We have had an error when we tried to disable uh, the gyro in it. it. It does have a gyro inside. And we, so there we go and take a photo. So it counts down and then it will, ta-da, take a photo. Oh, we haven't tried burst, but yet yeah, multiple photos at once. So, and it's time L, uh, time lapse time-lapse photos and that uh, little thing is supposed to be a spanner that goes into your uh, setup and you can set up uh, various parameters. You can turn the Wi-Fi off and on. There'll be a LED behind that. The Wi-Fi lights up and things like that. And the, what we, uh, we originally thought, oh, the Wi-Fi might be causing interference with the uh, microphone. It, it, it like uh, drops out. Um, but no, it seems to make no difference. So we're not sure what's going on with the audio. But 
yeah, check it out. I just thought you'd, I'd show you this uh, development uh, prototype. It's the first one. They were like four months behind schedule or something actually delivering this thing. And we think they've shipped like just over 50 units to the uh, early uh, backers um, who wanted one a, an early development unit so it's a little bit rough and ready there's firmware issues the audio yeah sucks I unless we're doing something horribly wrong and the videos you know quite pixelated go over and have a look at it and you can see the EEV blog lab in 360 degree but I just really like the concept it really is uh, quite nice packaged really well I mean you know the the envelope design that you have to get your electronics to fit in there and there's no surprise it gets hot you know to do real-time video stitching at 30 frames per second is just requires a whole bunch of grunny processing so yeah you know if it does have an arm processor doing that it's probably running at you know 800 megahertz or you know <laughs> something like that it must be really screaming along or it could be using an FPGA as I said or some sort of GPU chip unfortunately we don't have any internal photos if anyone does have any more uh, info on it or maybe the developers can uh, if they're watching this can uh, uh, leave it in the comments maybe and uh, tell us it's not open hardware is it Matt don't believe so. Not open source. No, no, we don't think it's open source hardware. So it's, uh, you know, just a regular commercial product. But So it's been recording for almost five minutes now, as you can see. And let's get a look at the thermal profile of it. And uh, sorry about the overhead lights and uh, crap like that. But you can see that it is the bottom that uh, really gets quite warm, even though it's not being uh, charged. There we go. That top, it's actually that part of it that gets really hot so the lower part of the bottom so that's where all the processing is so there you go yeah you can see where all the processing is happening and all the voltage regulation they're going to have some loss in there your uh, DC to DC converters aren't going to be uh, you know they're only going to be 90% efficient tops um, so yeah there's lots of power in there of course there's no um, you know, there's no airflow at all. There's no way they can uh, uh, do that. It's all passive uh, radiator with the heatsink. But there you go. That's just a thermal look at the 360 cam after six minutes. It will it will warm up a bit more. But yeah, it's getting up to like 45 degrees or something. So it's getting a little bit toasty in there right about now. It'll be warmer inside, uh, of course. I'm not sure if they like fill it. I don't think they fill it with like a... Um, you know, a uh, gel or, uh, you know, a thermal uh, compound like potted or anything like that um, to get the heat out. So who knows that how they're getting the heat from the uh, main processor in there, which would be the thing that's uh, contributing most of the power dissipation in this things. And you can see some uh, misalignment in the, uh, like my thumb to the thermal image there. That's just the camera because I'm actually closer than the uh, 30 centimetre distance there but there you go 45 degrees so I'm not sure if the uh, processor has got um, some you know heat spreader or heat sink on top to actually spread that power whether or not they've flipped the processor you know is uh, pressed on the other side like is on the bottom uh, side of the board down here that that'd be how if I was designing this thing that's how I'd do it I would um, put the uh, I would put the processor on the bottom of the board and then put a thermal pad between it and the base of the unit but uh, yeah the poor old battery is uh, trapped in there of course and uh, but yeah you can see because of the o-ring seal there's not much heat that's getting from like uh, the where it's being generated through to the base of the unit like this so um, yeah it's just it's you know it's helping of course but uh, it's not happening too much it doesn't help that you've got all the uh, plastic over there top of the thing either so anyway there you go there's a quick thermal look at that it's been running for nine minutes now and a uh, little bit warm but uh, she'll be right no worries and I'm not sure if the battery gauge is uh, linear or not but yeah after like 10 minutes of uh, use you saw where it uh, was before it had like bars up to here and it's yeah it's um <laughs> it's really sucking the juice out of this thing assuming that that's a, a linear um, bar graph and what voltage they drop out at I don't uh, no, but I'm going to give them benefit of the doubt that they've got their battery, battery management correct in that uh, respect. But yeah, no, there's, uh, there's only a 4 watt hour uh, battery, so I'm not sure what the quoted uh, battery life of this thing is. If it's in the specs, I'll uh, annotate 
on there, but uh, yeah, it's it's really chewing the power. Hmm, but it's got to do a lot. I mean, 30 frames per second stitching from three HD cameras in real time. That's just, that's crazy. And this is connected to a charger now, and you can see that the uh, processor hotspot is now up to 50 odd, and the bottom is uh, now up to 45, so that's to be expected because you're generating heat in the bottom, that's going to uh, radiate to the uh, top as well, increasing that uh, uh, the average uh, temperature in the top half, so you can't shoot video while it's uh, uh, doing USB charging, but that's just another data point for you, about 50. We've only had it going for like a few minutes on the USB charger, five minutes. And here's their uh, development kit uh, box that they shipped it in. There we go. First batch. Woohoo! And ta-da! It opens up and ta-da! It folds out. Beautiful. Bit of a wank there, but uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, how do you package something like that? There's got to be a fair bit of, you know, wasted space in your packaging, but that's nice foam packaging. Really like that. It's really cute. So there you go, early development prototype, and they've implemented it quite nicely. It's just a, you know, it, it, it's got a lot of issues and needs some ironing out, but there you go. There's the Gyroptic 360 cam. Hope you liked it. Catch you next time.